This week in comic book horror, we've got another horrifying haul of haunted comics hitting the shelves. Let's get right into this week's poll. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Before we get started, I wanted to alert my listeners that I'll be writing and drawing a new short story in Nightmare Theater 2. I thank those who picked up the first collection, and I believe there are still some copies of that one where I did a story with superstar Carlos Granda. This new anthology delves into the darkest corners of the mind and beyond. If you have some extra cash, be sure to support the Nightmare Theater 2 Kickstarter and pick yourself up a copy. Look for a link to Nightmare Theater's Kickstarter down below before the comments. And now it's time for This Week in Comic Book Horror, December 1st, 2021. Grim Universe Quarterly 2021 Holiday Special No. 1 is from Zinoscope. The story is by Joe Bruscia, Ralph Tedesco, and Dave Francini. Well, there's no description to this issue, but from the looks of the cover, it looks like the devil's attempting to reach for a cool car, even though there's no way he's going to have legroom in that vehicle. Meanwhile, on an oddly designed airplane, it looks like some poor woman wearing something inappropriate for air travel ass, ass, titties, titties. bites her tongue while taking a massive dump. Sounds like a rip-roaring good time. It's not clear what holiday this book is celebrating. Maybe just travel for the holidays, which I must admit is hell. World of Darkness Crimson Thaw number 3 is from Vault Comics. The story is by Tim Seeley, Jim Zub, Teeny Howard, Blake Howard, and Danny Lore, with art by Julius Ota. A bunch of impressive writers have teamed up to birth a world where werewolves and vampires battle it out for world domination, with normal humans caught in the middle. Sure, I get underworld vibes from this premise, but it'll be interesting to see how this book veers from that concept, as I'm sure the writers are aware of the similarities as well. That moody cover is nice and expressive, really delivering a wonderful way of communicating the struggle between the monsters. Myths and Legends Quarterly No. 5 is from Zinoscope. The story is by Joe Brusha, with art by Al Barianuevo. Well, this is awkward. Looks like Myth and Legends Quarterly No. 6 came out last week, and this week we're getting issue number 5. Hmm. Well, this one and done issue features Mystir, Zinoscope's Lady Death-like character, who is attempting to find out the origins of her dark powers, and how it saps the goodness from her every time she uses them. Sounds like some fun superhero angst, which is sorely lacking from a lot of mainstream comics these days. Plus, of course, as with every Zenoscope book, you're going to get covers featuring Ass, titties, ass. Hotel Volume 2, Number 1, is from Artists, Writers, and Artisans, Inc., also known as AWA. The story is by John Lees, and the art is by Lee Luridge. My buddy John Lees, who has delivered some really horrifying comics, including And Then Emily Was Gone and Sink, returns with the second series focusing on the various terrors inhabiting the rooms of a haunted hotel. I read the first series, and it was filled with a wide variety of monsters and mayhem. With the creative team returning, I'm sure so will all of the horror. Can't wait for this one. Animal Castle, number one, is from Ablaze. The story is by Xavier Dorison, with art by Felix Delep. While it's not exactly horror, I do love me a good animal allegory story. This looks to be influenced heavily by Animal Farm, as it has a bull and his dog enforcers ruling with an iron hoof over the rest of the farm animals. That is, until an outsider rat visits and causes all kinds of political disruption. It'll be interesting to see how far this story strays from Orwell's original, which is one of my favorite books of all time, and how much it borrows. The art looks inspiring as well. Evil Ernie, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Scott Lobdell, with art by Ariel Medell. I think I have every appearance of Evil Ernie since its inception in 1991. I can't believe it's been 30 years. 
looks like the spirit of Ernie, possesses a guy named Ernest, unleashing all kinds of diabolical and deadly impulses from a seemingly good and wholesome kid. I like the idea of casting Ernie as the flip side to a good guy protagonist. One of the most iconic horror fiends from the 90s returns, and that means good things to horror fans. The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 28, is from Skybound Comics. The story is by Robert Kirkman, with art by Charlie Adlard. The governor continues to do very evil things to our group of survivors in this colorized reprinting of the Walking Dead series. This leg of the series grew stronger and more intense with every issue, and retells the series at the height of its popularity. I remember the controversy of recoloring classics like Romero's Night of the Living Dead and people being totally against it. It's interesting how times have changed. Darkhold, Black Bolt, number one, is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Mark Russell, with art by David Cutler. I haven't read all of these Darkhold tie-ins, where Scarlet Witch uses her reality-warping powers to rewrite the lives of a handful of heroes and set them to a horror template. I did read the Iron Man issue, and it turned out to be a pretty gnarly body horror story, where the Iron Man armor begins technoizing Stark's own flesh until there's nothing left, and then it becomes hungry for more. It'll be interesting in seeing what horrifying places this series will go with Black Bolt's thunderous voice powers. Maniac of New York, The Bronx is Burning, number one, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Elliot Kalan, with art by Andrea Muti. I love the original series, which has a ruthless killer wearing a hockey mask rampaging through the streets of New York and the task force assigned to bring him down. It's basically the Jason Goes to Manhattan we all wanted to see in the movie theater, but never did. I can't wait to see the next chapter, which promises copycat killers popping up all over the city, and our investigators getting more and more pressure from the press and the public to put this man-monster down or bring him in. Can't wait for this series. The Me You Love in the Dark, number 5, is from Image Comics. The story is by Scotty Young, and the art is by Jorge Corona. This book only takes a second to Red Room as my favorite horror comic on the shelves. Breaking up is always hard to do, but when you have to break up with a ghost, it's downright deadly. This issue looks to be the wrap-up where Ro realizes the relationship she has with the spirit inhabiting her artist's retreat is a toxic one and has to find a way to get out. It's not going to be easy. This is fantastic writing paired with emotional and imaginative art. This is a sleeper hit of a series that you're not going to want to miss. The Department of Truth, number 14, is from Image Comics. The story is by James Tiny IV, with art by John Pearson. I haven't been following this series, but there have been quite a few chapters that have intrigued me. This one focuses on the formation of Scientology and L. Ron Hubbard's attempt to resurrect an alien deity named Babylon. I love the way this series is fearless in the way it delves into modern conspiracy. New artist John Pearson joins the team for this issue. Well, that's a nice crop of horror comics. Any of them interest you? Let me know which one's down in the comments. That'll be it for today. Please chime in down below in the comments and let me know how on the nose or mind-numbingly wrong I am, or you can counter with your own review. So guys, you know how YouTube works. I'd love to be able to dedicate more time to this channel. I'm not monetized yet, so if you want to help me out, remember to hit all the pertinent bells and whistles down below. Want some spooky comics to read? I have two new horror comic book trade paperbacks you should look out for. Both Grave Trancers and Pirouette, collecting never-before-published issues, can be found in only the finest of comic book shops. If you're looking for written reviews, you can find them on my website, mlmillerwrites.com. If you really want to show your support, I also have a Patreon page, at ML Miller. Look for the link to my Patreon page down below. Thank you so much for your time, and take care.